Long distance swimming wasn't new to Florence. As a matter of fact, she was the first woman to swim the English Channel in both directions. So on an incredibly chilly July morning, she began the 20-mile swim with her mom and trainer in one of the boats near her. And they say that the fog was so thick that day that she could barely see the boats surrounding her. Florence was brave. She was strong. She was determined. She was experienced. She was prepared. She was motivated. She was encouraged. All the things that she needed to be to reach this goal. But yet, after 15 hours of swimming, numbed by the cold, she asked to be taken out of the water. Now, of course, her mom and her trainer, they were encouraging her, you're, you're, you're so close, you're almost there, just keep swimming, Florence, we believe in you, you can do it, just keep swimming. But when she looked toward the California coast, all she could see was fog. So after 15 hours and 55 minutes, Florence was taken out of the water. It wasn't until hours later, when her body began to warm, that she felt the shock of her failure. To a reporter, she blurted out, Look, I'm not excusing myself, but if I could just have seen land, if I could have just seen the coast, I might have made it. You see, she was pulled out of the water a half mile from the coast. But the fog, the fog is what kept her from seeing not only her goal, but for her to see how far she had come. She felt like she was getting nowhere, like she was just swimming and swimming and swimming and swimming and getting nowhere. Like what she was doing wasn't making a difference at all. And so as we enter into this sermon series, Pray It Forward, today, praying for eyes to see. Maybe you feel like you're in a bit of a fog as well. Maybe it's a fog of grief. Maybe it's a fog of doubt. Maybe it's a fog of anger or debt. A relationship that's not working out, an illness, family problems, a grown child who's struggling, demands that never seem to end. Maybe you feel as though you are in a fog this morning, living your life the best you can, swimming and swimming and swimming and swimming and feeling as though you're not getting anywhere. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. I will sustain you. I will lift you up, Jesus says. And we might say that Jesus is not only the one in the boat cheering us on, but Jesus is the one swimming right beside us, leading us to shore. And some of us might be hearing a call this morning to refocus our attention from the fog that wants to envelop us, from the fog that is enveloping us, and accept the love, mercy, and grace that is ours through Jesus Christ. I want to tell you about another woman. We don't know her name, only that she was more than likely the victim of the religious leader's greed. You see, in Scripture, as far back as Isaiah, maybe even farther, there is this awareness that widows and orphans were being oppressed. Even in Jesus' day, the religious leaders were still taking advantage of the poor, keeping them in a fog. One writer puts it like this, the poor and the oppressed were at the mercy of the scribes who loaded legal burdens on them without lifting a finger to relieve them. It's in our scripture this morning. 
If you're comfortable in doing so, I invite you to stand for a reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 12, verses 38, to where we will begin from the Common English Bible. As Jesus was teaching, he said, Watch out for the legal experts. They, lock, they like to walk around in long robes. They want to be greeted with honor in the markets. They long for a place of honor in the synagogues and at banquets. They are the ones who cheat widows out of their homes, and to show off, they say long prayers. They will be judged most harshly. Then Jesus sat across from the collection box for the temple treasury, and observed how the crowd gave their money. Many rich people were throwing in lots of money. One poor widow came forward and put in two small copper coins worth about a penny. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I assure you that this poor widow has put in more than everyone who's been putting money in the treasury. All of them are giving out of their spare change. But she, she's giving out of her hopeless poverty. And she's given everything she had, even what she needed to live on. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Like many of you, I've heard this story all of my life. But I never stopped to consider that this poor widow was more than likely a victim in the religious system. And even so, she still gives to this institution that refuses to help her, that refuses to notice her, those who fail to have eyes to see her. It is obvious that her devotion is to God. And the fog of injustice the fog of greed, the fog of distrust, the fog of her loss. You see, unlike Florence, she refused to let it overtake her. It's as though this poor widow has eyes to see that it is God who is sustaining her and lifting her up. It's as though she knows she has eyes to see that it is God who is walking beside her and leading her. And it's as though she chooses to move beyond the fog of grief and loss and she becomes that light of hope. A light for all of us, even though the fog surrounds her. Jesus sees her when no one else does. So I want us to go back to Florence for just a moment. We left this swimmer in great defeat and shame and regret, but instead of letting that define her and consume her, she gets back in the water. Two months later, she tried it again. And they say the fog was even more dense. But this time, she never lost sight that somewhere beyond the fog, there was land. Remember the first time after 15 hours and 55 minutes, she was taken out of the water. This time, after 13 hours, 47 minutes, and 55 seconds, she reached the California coast. Breaking a 27-year-old record by more than two hours and becoming the first woman to ever complete the swim. Good news, right? Good news for certain. But church, here's the thing this morning. We have to remember that the good news of Jesus Christ isn't about us reaching our goals. The good news of Jesus Christ isn't about ignoring or denying our pain, our grief, our loss, our own fog. The good news of Jesus Christ isn't about pretending that we're okay when we're not. The good news of Jesus Christ is that even in our deepest fog, there is light. Even in our deepest grief, 
there is comfort. Even in the midst of injustice, there is hope. And even when it seems that no one sees you, Jesus sees you. Jesus sees you. The good news of Jesus Christ has the power not only to transform our lives, but to transform today.